And it is Wednesday. It's 2 o'clock. Welcome back. Well, that's the 2 o'clock hour, I should say. To Across the Board uh, with the Colonel and E here on Hawk Radio, hawkradio.org. And again, all we bring you is bangers here as far as bands. Uh, another one of my favorite bands, Colonel, your favorite bands. And really, you know, kind of an underground band um, through the ska and punk scene, but just one of the best bands out there for my money. And, and saw them a long time ago in California, and they're still doing it these days. Uh, we have JR from Less Than Jake with us right now. JR, are you there? Yes, I'm here, barely. You know, because you were just talking and you're giving me that grand intro, and I started hearing like flickering in the call. So I was uh, like, boy, wouldn't it be a bummer if he gave me this awesome intro? And it was like, JR! And dead <laughs> just dead air right yeah uh yeah that, we actually just had that problem uh, in a recent interview with uh with john sheldon from echo trend it worked out pretty funny but uh, yeah we had the same problem with him so and he was also well, in florida so maybe it's, yeah, it's the well, florida it might, thing it, I'm, just, I'm not giving it away it may still happen you know we're, we're cruising down the highway here so we'll see what happens yeah right nice so uh now are you guys in a tour bus or what do you guys roll in these days yeah we're in a tour bus um it's you know we're old we can't really drive you know we all lost our licenses well, <laughs> because everybody we got a collective dui in the state of maryland as a matter of oh, fact there you go yeah we were all drunk in the van i don't know who is driving but we all got a collective dui they uh, give it to all five of us it's weird that's real like actually there's a such thing as a collective dui yeah and only in the state of maryland <laughs> you should go try it you and five of your buddies go out get Camera, jump in the car, drive down the highway backwards at 115, see if the cops pull you over. And if they do, they'll give you a collective DUI. Nice. It well, doesn't last as long as a regular DUI, I think. I think it spreads out over, you know, instead of, I think you, like, lose your license for a single DUI for two years. If you spread it out, everybody just loses it for, like, four months. Oh, that's not know? bad. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe everybody does a night in jail or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It would actually be better to get, like, a minivan or a 15-passenger van full of people because, I mean, if it's just a two-year penalty and there's 15 people in the van, I mean, it's like a month and a half each. That's, right? that's that a bad. good point. <laughs> I like yeah. that. Yeah, that's – hey, always a way to think of that. That's good. Well, we're coming to the uh, show in Baltimore, uh, you know, so we'll have to uh, plan that out if need be. <laughs> we'll just bring some people just in case. We'll run out of tour bus. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, just, you know, like I said, the more pe- the more the merrier. The more the merrier. We'll you get got that- a bus full of people, man. That's like two days. <laughs> You know, in and out, right? Easy. Yeah, you sit around playing Xbox, and a couple of days later, you're good to go. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the band. Uh, you guys are still on tour. You guys have been around for, you know. Uh, yeah, long s- enough. We can move on to the next part. You know, <laughs> we yeah, right. We're actually getting, we're getting younger. <laughs> nice. Yeah. We, we, singing, we took that Benjamin Button uh, oh, yeah. drink. Oh, yeah. 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 They have that drink, that Benjamin Button drink. It's called Four Loco. <laughs> younger. Yeah, right. Yeah. If you can That's still buy that stuff. It. Yeah, that's why they banned it. Four loco. Um, yeah, well, we're we're of the same age as uh, as you guys, so I know what you're saying there. Um, Twenty six. Oh, well, then we're a little bit older then. Yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. Wow. I feel terrible hang, now. Hang on to that 26 for a while, yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, and you guys just, you, you have such an amazing live show. That's one of the best things about ska punk bands and that sort of thing that, you know, you, that's what you do. You, you thrive on the live show. And I saw you guys in San Diego it's like 96, I guess, something like that on the Warp Tour. And just wow, loved it. Wow, you are old. Holy yeah. Shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, l- just an amazing show, though. Loved it. One of my favorite bands out there. But I guess my question is, um, how do you guys keep the energy going after all these years? Um, you know, you've been around for, for you know so many. How do you keep the energy going from, from show after show? Not even through the years, but, you know, on tour. I would think doing a four-month tour, you, you would get tired after a while. You know, how do you keep that energy going? I mean, we do get tired, you know, um, you just, you know, as you get older, you start realizing that, you know, all the things that you used to do when you're younger hurt more, but yes. you can still do them, you know, yeah. it just hurts a little more and the recovery time is a little bit longer. So, um, how do we get through it now? Well, there's this stuff called Red Bull and this other stuff called Jägermeister. And if you pour it together, magical <laughs> elixir and things happen, you know, um, I know, I know plenty about that. Yeah. Yeah, man. So you got to, like, you know, stretch out, eat right, sort of. You know what I mean? It's as right as you can. And right. I don't know. It's the old Hulk Hogan method. You know, train, say your prayers, and eat your vitamins. Except <laughs> we don't train or say prayers. Uh, <laughs> and Jaeger might And the, and the, and the vitamins are actually Vicodin or Viagra. <laughs> See, I guess it depends on the That's- night. That's probably uh, what uh, Hawk was saying back then. Viking, it just it just sounded like uh, vitamins. Yeah, and of course the prayers didn't help him much with the, the ex-wife. So, 
Yeah, well, you know, that's the reason that they're ex-wives. Exactly, <laughs> future ex-wife. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, you yeah. guys you guys have had a lot of, uh, you know, guest uh, artists on, on songs, like you had Taleb Kweli on The Science mm -hmm. of Selling Yourself Short. Now, my favorite, and I'm not kidding about this, one of my favorite movies of all time, because this movie is stupid, hilarious, is Good Burger. And you guys Good actually... Good Burger. Yeah, Good Burger. And you guys actually hooked up with Kel Mitchell and did the yeah, theme song, The We're All... What's that? Hook up, hook. Chris actually hooked up with Kel. Oh, okay, um, for the We're All yeah. Dudes song. Yeah, how did that come yeah. about? No, no, I mean, he actually hooked up with Kel. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, they, they dated for a while, just, you know. Got was... a little awkward when his wife found out, but yeah, whatever. That's, again, <laughs> that's why it's an ex-wife. But hey. it was, I, that was actually before I was in the band, so I don't know too much about it. But I do know uh, a story that when Nickelodeon was interviewing Kel and Chris and uh, Vinny about the song. During the interview, Chris pulled down his pants and did the full uh, butt cheek pull moon of the camera for Nickelodeon during well done. the interview. Well done. Yeah. So never, never really made Nickelodeon. We were pretty good at stuff up when we were younger. So um, we're just trying to stuff up as much as we get older. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> Sometimes you can't help yourself, but you know it was it was fun. We never play the song live. You know you can ask a million times, we'll say no. Right. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. That's for sure. And that, you know that song, more people than I think any of us ever thought would hear it have said to us, "Dude, Good Burger." You know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. thanks. Is that what <laughs> people know us for? Awesome. <laughs> that would be a shame if that was all. Yeah. Now, yeah, but that's awesome, though. You know, whatever gets people into it, I guess. Right. Now we've recently... Good Burger was everybody's gateway drug into less than Jake, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> we recently had um, Dave Wakeling of the English Beat on the show, and uh, we talked to him about being, you know, a ska pioneer. You mean the, you mean the beat? Yeah. Yeah, the beat. beat. Come on, right. Man. That's, well, got to tell it the way most people know it. Well, yeah, he's currently yeah. touring in the U.S. as the English Beat, so yeah, yeah. Right, because now, that's what they were over here. Yeah, right. exactly. What what is right. what has been his influence uh, just you know over your music and um, and in the ska population in general yeah, ska some, punk population yeah a lot of those pioneers like the specials and those bands yeah I mean you know Dave was um, I like the beat certain songs by the beat I think for me in the two tone era there was a lot of bands that were you know that it was specific songs for me two tone era but the one record that was amazing was that the first specials record you know was produced by Elvis Costello so super into that and it's just well written good ska pop type songs so that's like the definitive two tone sound to me you know but like um i suppose that kind of stuff has more of a formulaic influence meaning like the way that the songs are structured i think like if you go back to a like more traditional like jamaican ska where you know it was the scottalites and like you know there was still like a pop song format to it somewhat but it was still more a b a b a b a you know what i mean where right. with the specials and stuff and that two-tone english sound songs became a pop song you know what i mean where there was a bridge and a part and, yep. you know what i mean it was mm -hmm. definitely structured differently so it kind of took it to that next level and i think that's why it ended up helping and i mean if it wasn't for that you wouldn't have had you know bands like the toasters boston's fishbone operation ivy oh, yeah. you know new york citizens whoever you want to talk about in the quote-unquote third wave dance hall crashers they were awesome and you again, know what i mean so oh yeah absolutely and again that's but that's such a testament to you guys that a lot of those bands that you named don't exist anymore but you guys are yeah. still out there charging hard every every week, you know, and, and out there on the road and still putting out great music. Yeah. So we appreciate that. Now, oh, well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. We appreciate that, too. Absolutely, Thank man. You. Again, you're listening to Across the Board. Uh, we're here with uh, JR from Less Than Jake. Now, JR, you play sax and you do background vocals. Now, we're talking about, uh, you know, like I said, the live show with you guys is so amazing. And one of the, you guys put thought into making the shows different and fun for the fans instead of just showing up and hearing some music. So, you know, one of your shows back in 2007, you guys actually had, you kind of staged the Price is Right game show. And you were, yeah. you were quizzing, uh, you, know, the, you know, people in the crowd, you know, doing less than Jake trivia, having them play some actual games from the, uh, you know, the Price is Right and, and, you know, giving away prizes. You know, I guess, what, what, where does that creativity come from? Boredom. <laughs> 
That's a great exact answer. answer. I mean, that's I had where creativity head. is sparked, isn't it? Yeah. Sit around, bored. Either you just sit around and stare at the television, or you sit, you know, you come up with an idea and go, "What if this happened?" You know, like I guess you know in the in this in that '70s show when they are sitting around the table yep. smoking weed. Yep. That's probably how it happens. <laughs> there's not weed; it just kind of happens. Or maybe there is weed. I don't know. You know, it just depends on where how it happens. I can see know? that you guys all crowd around the uh, the Mike table. In the yeah. Jager bombs. We all, yeah, and then we look at each other, and Roger would be Kelso, and you know, well, I don't have to give him, you know, we, we could do this later, but <laughs> it just kind of happens, you know, and then, like, we're like, well, what if we did this, and then, well, what if we did this, well, okay, can we build this, yeah, you know, and we just built a plinko board, and we built a wheel, and came up with the questions every day, dressed that's up, sick. so you try to do something that's different, you try to do something that you've never seen anybody else do before, and we always say, like, hey, what if we did this, you know, like, we just released this thing called the TV EP, and yes. that, again, it's just a conversation that we had on the bus, you know, and you just take the idea and you make it a reality the best you can, you know, so that's what we've always tried to do as a band, and that's what we'll continue to try and do as a band for the rest, as long as we're allowed to keep being a band, now, you know what I mean? getting back to this, that 70s show thing, you said Roger would be Kelso. Are you saying that Roger is pretty or Roger stupid? Uh, next question. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, what do you guys still have to accomplish? You know, you as a musician yourself and, and the band Less Than Jake, you know, you're one of those bands that, that, you know, talks about you're doing something you love that happens to be your profession. You're making a living doing it. You're not just doing it as a job because somebody said you need to be in a band. You know, so it's your passion that you're doing every day, but what do you still have to accomplish out there? You know, that's the first time anybody's ever asked me that question. And my my first and honest response, like, is nothing. You know, that's I've great. done everything that I feel that I have always wanted to do. You know, like, we've been really lucky. There's always little things here and there that, you know, we haven't done and we may never do. Um, but I've, I've done everything that I wanted to do. You know, it's it's amazing that I can sit here and honestly say that with like a clear conscience, you know. But it doesn't make it any less exciting. Do you know what I mean? Because Absolutely. there's always things that we do that are new and dangerous. Like we're going to Indonesia in a couple of months. Wow. Like, I've never been to Indonesia. That's exciting. You know what I mean? I'm terrified and excited and <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's all those things. Like when we first went to South America, it's exciting. You know, we get to travel all over the world and do this thing and people come see our band play, you know, like, Oh, we get to go see all this stuff and we get to play music. Right. And we get, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, it's mind blowing, you know? And I think there's a lot of dudes and a lot of different bands and stuff that forget that right? because they're just so caught up in the numbers game and jaded, whatever. You know, and yeah, it's not even jaded. It's just like chasing the white rabbit. You yeah. know what I mean? Absolutely. You know? Yeah, and, and that's why we appreciate bands like you guys. And, and again, I always harp on this, but nobody picks the band for us. You know that we're going to have on the radio show. We pick, we hand pick these bands because we're fans of them, and you know people that put on great shows. And that's that's why we love bands like you guys. You know, you, you're doing it out there instead of you know you know like Colonel here talked about who was it Megadeth you saw and they were just put on a terrible they show. Ter they were terrible live. Yeah, they, really they were. just didn't yeah. care, right? I mean, I saw Nine Inch Nails recently and they were terrible live. It was just like wow, man, they just don't care anymore. But you know, you guys still put the heart into it. And, and the fans appreciate that. That it honestly comes across. And I, I have so much respect for a band that w went out and did all these TV theme songs, and you guys actually covered the Animaniacs theme song. <laughs> Thanks, man. That, Thank you. That is sick to me. <laughs> I love that Just show. Just so you know, that was the last one that we added to the list. I was like, I'm not going to take credit for it. It's a lasty but, but a goodie. Somebody, I remember saying to Roger, how come we're not playing Animaniacs? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. So uh, that was like the last one, and we were really—I was stoked that we did that one. Nice, it was fun. Thanks. I'm glad you liked that. Absolutely. Awesome. I lo yeah, love the show and, and love the rendition of it. Yeah. No. Oh, cheers. Thanks, man. You guys are also doing the uh, Soundwave tour over in Australia. A huge, yes. huge deal over there, and uh, you're playing with a lot of different bands in there. I mean, a lot of big names as well. What's it going to be like for you guys to be out and about doing this? I mean, obviously, it's a lot of uh, traveling in a short period you're of flying time. Flying every as well. night. Yeah. Yeah, like we fly from city to city. We did the sound wave two years ago. Um, it's going to be fun, man. We're with friends, you know, like I know we're doing, there's side shows that we're doing with Newfound Glory and uh, Bayside, and those are like really good friends. So it's cool to be doing that. And then I know like on the actual show shows, the festival shows, like Pennywise is on there and, you know, like friends of ours are on it. And then I know there's also um, bands like, you know, Slayer, <laughs> Iron Maiden, you yes. know, I mean, like, 
bands that we've done festivals with before. Right. You know what I mean? So right. it'll be cool. It'll just be, it's a, it's a mass of people and craziness. You know, so it'll definitely be fun. It'll definitely be not too much sleep, and it'll definitely be a lot of beer. A lot. Of beer. <laughs> no, I'll ask and you. Maybe some, and maybe a Fletcher story or two. Fletcher Jr. story. Who knows? Nice. Know. I'll ask you one final question before uh, before we wrap this up here. Uh, what's the last album you bought, and uh, what's the last album? Uh, what's the album you have that fans will be surprised that you have? The last album I bought, like paid money for. Yes. Um. Hmm. I'd have to think about that one. You know what? The last album I paid money for was Billy Joel's Glass Houses. Nice. Okay. Yeah. That was actually, I, now that you ask, and the, the record I had bought prior to that was Never Shout Never's new record, Harmony, believe it or not. All right. And that would be my, that would be my, maybe they wouldn't think I had that record. Right. Okay. Record, you know, because I actually think he's a great songwriter. Yeah, for, absolutely. You know, that he's not, spe- he's not um, speaking to me personally but mm. people that he's speaking to he's touching people you know and not in like a weird uncle way you know? <laughs> he's, he's really like he really is he's saying something and it's like i know it's weird and kind of kitschy or whatever but like i know he's trying to do something and like i talked to that dude christopher and he's, he's a trippy kid you know i told but i get what he's doing he's doing his own thing and in this era of bands that all look and sound the same yes he doesn't look or sound the same and you know what i, I kind of back it yeah you've got to respect that absolutely yeah you know so i guess that would be my defending why i listen to something but i don't feel like i don't defend anything you i shouldn't have to justin bieber records how's that multiple justin bieber records that you might have to defend i, I think i retract my former statement <laughs> yeah man no well you know what i don't have his i take that back i don't have my world version 1.0 but I have uh, the, I don't new, even, the last one that he put out. I don't even know guy, what that is. The, the guy, well, the, his, uh, the big record, you know, was written by The Dream. That's his, the song That's right. Yeah, yeah. But I listen to pop music, not so much because of the artist. I listen to the pop music because of the songwriting teams that are producing. Mm-hmm, absolutely. The records, you know what I mean? So if anything that The Dream does, anything that Dr. Luke does, um, you know, all that crap. Yeah, Teddy yeah, Riley my, used to do some my, great stuff. My, and it has nothing to do with the fact that, you know, Justin Bieber's a well-kept young boy with uh, comb over hair. It's, <laughs> no, no, it has nothing to do with that. And I can hear back, the other guys. Back to, that, back to that weird uncle thing. Yeah, know? right. And I can hear the other guys in the band laughing in the background, so that's great. Yeah, well, that's what I was like, yeah, right. Well, they all have Justin Bieber t-shirts on right now, so... That's, that's what we not... make our crew. That's what we make our crew wear. <laughs> that's oh, awesome. Man. Yeah, it was Sheldon right. from uh, Echo Trend. He actually wears a, a Kelly Clarkson shirt to the death metal shows and stuff. Of course he does. Yeah, and, he, and, and people think he's cool. You know, yeah. If I wore a Kelly Clarkson shirt, Jesus, there'd be all kinds of ramifications. People <laughs> call me a bundle of sticks. <laughs> Terrible ramifications get it jr all right well uh so you guys are out on tour right now uh tell everybody how they can you know again people right now are listening across the country we have listeners from across the world so tell everybody how they can keep in touch with you guys and how they can uh, find out where you are on the road you can go if you're in the united states of america you can go to www.lessthanjake.com Ticks. It's T I X dot com. Mm-hmm. And you can buy tickets to any of the shows and see the schedule for the United States. Anywhere else in the world, you can go to less than Jake dot com or you can go to any of the major social networking sites, Facebook, Twitter, and you type in that backslash less than Jake and you can find us. Nice. We're really easy to find. So or Google, you know, Google's a nice thing right here. Yeah, JR, you Twitter uh, Justin Bieber, don't you? Huh? Don't no, answer I, that. I, actually, I don't even know what I that means. Twitter, I follow Justin Bieber on Twitter. <laughs> I actually, you know, to, between you and I and the f- people that are listening, yeah. I think that he's a marketing genius. Oh, you yeah. Know? And I think that the, I think that kid's just as f- punk rock as any quote-unquote punk rock band because what he has was created on YouTube. He did it himself. He put his little videos up. Really? And you know what? People found out about That's how that his manager found out about him. And, yeah, he's been given opportunities or whatever, but, like, he started his own thing himself, and I yeah, again I respect that. It's like, that is impressive. That's a new. That's a new yeah. level of. It's the next generation starting to do their things their way. You know what I mean? So who am I to hate on it? And yeah. who are who is anybody else to right. hate on it? Either? You're right. You don't like the music. You don't like the music. Don't Fine. listen. Who cares? Nobody. I, there's a lot of bands that I don't like the music of, but you know, respect the game at least. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. That's I'm, amazing I'm, insight into Justin Bieber. I would have never thought about it that way, but he's got a valid point. You're right. You're right. Yeah, actually, you've turned around my views on Justin Bieber today. I, no, I'm, I mean, I'm dude, serious. You can hate the shit out of him. You can hate the shit out of him and his fucking comb over and his stupid face <laughs> and whatever. You know what I mean? Like, and the fact that your girlfriend probably would make out with him. You know? Like, yeah, you're right. And he and he could be a good guy. You're right. You can't you can't judge somebody based on that and everything. So uh, uh, he's probably a little <laughs> sucker. <you know? laughs> I I think I think I, you, you think. know. Yeah, you don't. I don't think you follow him on Twitter. I think you may follow him in the street. I, I'm not sure about you, Jr. Uh, no, big dude. Yeah, I got I got uh, perch points everywhere, binoculars <laughs> and Vaseline. You know? Again, this has been Jr. Man, I, we Jr. I can't tell you how much we appreciate the time, and we are really, really stoked to see the show. Uh, coming up at Sonar in Baltimore. Uh, again, you can see them anywhere in the world, anywhere across the country. Sonar just happens to be the closest to us. Uh, and looking forward to that. And, and thanks again, man. Just one of the truly, and I sincerely mean this, one of the best bands out there. Not one of the best punk bands, ska bands, whatever. One of the best bands out there. One of the best live bands out there. Period. Go see Less Than Jake. Buy all their stuff. And uh, allow these guys to keep doing what they do. JR, thanks so much, man. We appreciate the time. Gentlemen, thank you after being in a band for almost 20 years. The fact that someone still gives a shit about our old asses is both humbling and we appreciate it so much that, you know, I can never say it. So thank you guys for uh, caring about our band. Absolutely, really man. We, and truly, you know, I've, I've got a Less Than Jake CD in my Jeep right now, so absolutely, man. Uh, this has been Across the Board with E and the Colonel here on Hawk Radio. HawkRadio.org.